Canadian authorities have charged three individuals in connection with the murder of Sikh separatist leader Hardeep Singh Nijjar in British Columbia, according to a reliable source. I'm here today to announce that we arrested and charged three individuals for first-degree murder and conspiracy to commit murder in relation to Hardeep Nijjar's homicide. I had investigators along with Edmonton Services Edmonton Police Services and numerous other RCMP resources took custody of all three of these individuals in Edmonton, Alberta. The following three individuals were charged for this homicide. 22-year-old Garn Brar, who's an Indian national, who is residing in Edmonton, Alberta. 22-year-old Kamalpreet Singh, who was an Indian national, who was also residing in Edmonton, Alberta. 28-year-old Karnpreet Singh, who is also an Indian national, residing in Edmonton, Alberta. The incident, which occurred in June 2023, has strained relations between Canada and India. Let's take a look at the sequence of events leading up to these charges in September 2023, about three months after both countries announced plans to seal an initial trade pact, Canada unexpectedly paused talks on a proposed trade treaty with India. During AG20 summit in New Delhi on 10 September 2023, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi raised concerns with Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau about six separatist protests in Canada. Trudeau addressed Canada's parliament on 18 September 2023, stating that credible allegations were being actively pursued, linking Indian government agents to Nijjar's killing. Over the past number of weeks, Canadian security agencies have been actively pursuing credible allegations of a potential link between agents of the government of India and the killing of a Canadian citizen, Hardeep Singh Nijjar. India dismissed Trudeau's assertions as absurd on 19 September 2023, leading to the expulsion of diplomats from both nations. Following this diplomatic row, on 22 September 2023, India suspended issuing new visas for Canadians and requested Ottawa to reduce its diplomatic presence. Somebody uh, gives us specific or relevant information, we're prepared to look at it. So you have not received those intercepted communications from if the If I Canadian. had, would I not be looking at it? I don't, I'm asking you for a yes or no. On 29th October 2023, tens of thousands of Sikhs gathered in Surrey, British Columbia, at the same Sikh temple where Nijjar was killed, participating in an unofficial referendum on the creation of an independent Sikh state. Moving ahead to 21st November 2024, India's anti-terror agency filed a case against Gurpatwant Singh Pannun, a Sikh separatist, alleging that he had issued warnings to Air India passengers in video messages shared on social media. A day later, on 22nd November 2024, a senior Biden administration official disclosed that U.S. authorities had foiled a plot to assassinate Pannun, raising concerns over potential Indian government involvement. 5th February 2024 saw India's High Commissioner in Canada stating in an interview with The Globe and Mail newspaper that India would not share information with Canadian investigators regarding Nijjar's murder until Canada provides evidence. Recently, on 30th April 2024, the White House addressed a Washington Post report linking an officer in India's intelligence service to Nijjar's killing and the thwarted plot in the U.S., describing it as a serious matter. The Post had a lengthy story today detailing um, efforts by Indian intelligence services to carry out an assassination in the United States. Um, and now that some of those, I know you were asked about it when, there were, yeah. when this first emerged, but now that the details are known, um, can you talk about how, if at all, this has impacted our relationship with India? Yeah. What steps we may be taking to make sure that you know something like this doesn't happen? So any specifics? Uh, there's an investigation, as you know, uh, going uh, going on. So as you just stated in your 
a question to me and a criminal investigation the Department of Justice obviously is running that so anything specific to that uh, I would have to refer you to the DOJ look India is uh, an important strategic partner here in the United States uh, for the of sorry of the United States uh, so we are pursuing an ambitious agenda to expand our cooperation in, sev in several areas uh, as you know we've been really consistent about that uh, and have laid that out multiple times whether it's a meeting here uh, with, the, uh, with the Prime Minister or a meeting abroad. Uh, this is a serious matter and we're taking that very, very seriously. Uh, the government of India has been very clear with us that they are taking this seriously and, and will investigate and we expect uh, that, that accountability uh, uh, from the government uh, based on that. And so, um, but we're gonna continue to raise our concerns. That's not gonna stop. We're gonna continue to raise our concerns directly, directly with the Indian government. India's foreign ministry responded, denouncing the report's content. On the two Khalistan related uh, questions. See, what has happened is, uh, to be honest with you, in some countries, uh, these kinds of people have organized themselves politically and become a political lobby. Okay? And in some of these democratic countries, the, the politicians of those countries are made to believe that if they uh, de defer to these people or pander to these people, these people have some ability to get a community to support them. So they have tried to create space for themselves in the politics of these countries. I mean, at this time, I would say, you know, it's not so much a problem in the U.S. Our biggest problem right now is in Canada. Because in Canada, actually, the, today the, uh, the party in power in Canada, other parties in Canada, have given these kinds of extremism, separatism, advocates of violence, a certain legitimacy in the name of free speech.